One of the most interesting aspects of Genshin Impact that made me really fall in love with the game was the elemental reaction system. The fact that I could use fire to set the ground ablaze or use ice to create a platform on water made me look forward to a bunch of cool puzzles and other fun things I could interact with in the world. Sadly, most of the elemental puzzles and world aspects are fairly flat and kind of one-dimensional and didn't quite pan out as I thought, but I soon discovered just how deep and interesting the combat system is when combining different elements. In fact, the game really rewards you for using these reactions well and can punish you pretty severely for not knowing them. That's why in this video we're going over the elemental reactions, what they do, and why. And of course, I'll cover how to use these reactions to tremendously increase your damage. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm Shark, and I'm going to break down what you need to know most about elemental reactions so that you don't have to spend hours theory crafting. So let's start with the basics. When one or more elements come into contact, they can produce an elemental reaction. The type of reaction they produce depends on which elements come into contact with each other, as well as some more complicated things like application, timing, and elemental gauge theory. But those are a lot more advanced topics. If you'd like to know more about those subjects, let me know in the comments below. But for now, we're just going to go over the most important aspects of elemental reactions that a surprising amount of players don't actually know. So here's an overview of each elemental reaction and why you might want to use it. Freeze! Freeze occurs when you place hydro and cryo on an enemy, or water and ice, and then the enemy becomes frozen. Frozen enemies cannot move, and thus this is a nice form of crowd control or just an easy way to smack an enemy around because it's not running all over the place. You can freeze any enemy in the game, however, boss enemies do not get locked down or immobilized if they are frozen. They just receive the frozen status, which is important for certain bonuses to trigger that require an enemy to be frozen. But overall pretty simple, if an enemy comes into contact with ice and water, they become frozen and for most enemies this means they can't move. The next reaction is Melt. You trigger Melt by applying Pyro or Fire to an enemy already afflicted by Cryo or Ice. However, you can do the opposite and still trigger a melt reaction by applying cryo to an enemy that's already afflicted with pyro. And the way you apply the elements is actually important because it changes the amount of damage you do. If you apply cryo or ice first and then apply pyro or fire afterwards, you will trigger a melt reaction and that will make the fire or pyro damage you deal get a 2 times multiplier. However, if you use Pyro first and then apply Cryo afterwards, triggering the Melt reaction with the Cryo or Ice, you instead get a 1.5 times multiplier for the Cryo or Ice damage. And you may think that it is a no-brainer and that you always want to apply Cryo first and then Pyro second so you can get the bigger multiplier, but this isn't necessarily the case. Without getting into too much detail, it's actually harder to consistently trigger the stronger reaction than it is to trigger the weaker one. This has to do a lot with timing and elemental gauge theory, but suffice it to say that during the same time period, you can typically end up doing more of the weaker melt reactions, which are pyro first and then cryo, than you can of the stronger melt reactions, which are cryo first and then pyro. So even though you're triggering the weak reaction, your overall damage will be greater because you can trigger it way more frequently than you can the strong reaction. The next reaction is Vaporize. Vaporize is very similar to Melt, but it uses Hydro or Water and Pyro or Fire. When an enemy is first affected by Pyro or Fire and then comes in contact or is affected by Hydro or Water, the hydro or water damage will be increased by a 2 times multiplier. And just like melt, you can actually switch the order in which the elements are applied and still cause a vaporize reaction. So if an enemy is affected by hydro or water first, and then affected by pyro or fire, a vaporize reaction will occur, and the damage of the pyro or fire will be increased by a 1.5 times multiplier. And just like Melt, it is often better to use the weaker reaction, the 1.5 times pyro damage rather than the 2 times multiplier for hydro damage on Vaporize because you can make more of the weaker reactions more consistently. The next reaction is Overload. 
The overload reaction occurs when an enemy is affected by pyro and then electro, or vice versa. And causing overload by mixing pyro or fire and electro or electricity causes an explosion that deals pyro or fire damage. Regardless of whether the pyro application or the electro application causes the overload reaction, the triggered explosion will always deal pyro damage and have a two times reaction multiplier. Because Overload is a powerful explosive reaction, it's good at knocking enemies back, which is really handy for characters that want to fight at a distance, like Yoimiya or Yanfei, but not so great for characters that want to fight up close and personal, like Diluc or Razor. It's also really nice for breaking Geo Shields because it does a lot of damage to them with the explosive power. The next reaction is Electrocharged. Electrocharge is caused by applying hydro or water and electro or electricity. Electrocharge places both elemental auras of hydro and electro on an enemy and continuously zaps them every half second until no hydro or electro remains on that enemy. Each of the zaps is considered electro damage and it has a 1.2 reaction multiplier. So instead of dealing lots of damage in one swoop like Vaporizer Melt, Electrocharge deals a lot of damage over time. The Electrocharge reaction also has a unique property that causes the Hydro and Electro auras to lie underneath the Electrocharge status. This means that when you apply a third element to an enemy affected by Electrocharge, like for instance Pyro, you can trigger both Vaporize and Overload in the same instance of damage while at the same time getting some of the damage over time from the electrocharge reaction. The next reaction is Superconduct. Superconduct occurs when Cryo or Ice meets Electro or Electricity or vice versa. Triggering this reaction causes a small AoE and it also reduces the enemy's physical resistance by 40% for 12 seconds. This means that the non-elemental or white damage numbers that you deal become bigger. Even though the Superconduct reaction does cause damage, people typically just use it to reduce physical resistance so characters like Eula or Razor can hit harder. There's also a rumor that Superconduct lowers cryo or electro damage taken, but that's not true. The next reaction is Shatter. Shatter occurs when you hit a frozen enemy with a blunt attack. You can think of blunt attacks as attacks that are fairly heavy. They include things like claymore hits, geo damage, and also include special characteristics from certain characters like Klee's charge attack or her bombs. And the shatter reaction itself deals physical damage. Because physical damage is not really in a good spot in Genshin right now, and because you also have to freeze an enemy and then hit them with a blunt attack to cause shatter, most teams don't really build around the shatter reaction. The next reaction is Swirl. The Swirl reaction occurs when Animo or Wind comes into contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro. The Swirl reaction causes an AoE elemental damage of the same type as the original element it came into contact with, and it can also spread that element to affected targets, which can then trigger additional reactions. In fact, it's even possible to double Swirl in certain instances. This makes Animo a really valuable element, especially when it's paired with a team that uses multiple Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro characters. The next elemental reaction is Crystallize. Crystallize is what happens when Geo or the Earth element comes into contact with Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, or Electro. This reaction creates a shard on the ground of the elements that it came into contact with, either that Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, or Electro and picking up that shard grants a shield to the respective element. The crystallized reaction deals no damage, and because of this, it's often considered the most useless reaction in the entire game. The next reaction is burning. The burning reaction occurs when dendro or plant meets pyro or fire. This reaction creates the burning status, which deals pyro damage over time. This is also one of the elemental reactions that players first notice when they start the game because they realize they can set the grass on fire. Because grass is a constant source of dendro, adding pyro to it creates the burning reaction, just like you can add dendro and pyro to an enemy to create burning on them. While the pyro damage over time from the burning status is active, you can use other elements such as cryo or hydro to melt or vaporize the burning respectively. 
And as you may have realized by now, you can mix multiple reactions and depending on the order that you use them, you can make some really crazy things happen. The next reaction is bloom. Bloom occurs when the dendro element or the plant element comes into contact with the hydro or water element. The bloom reaction itself deals no damage, but what it does is leaves behind a dendro core, which looks like a little green seed on the ground. These dendro cores produced by the bloom reaction can be altered if they are affected by other elements, and we'll go into that in just a second, but if they are left undisturbed, they will explode after 6 seconds, dealing dendro damage. The explosions from dendro cores in the bloom reaction can also damage players within the explosion's area of effect, even if they were the ones who caused this reaction in the first place. However, they take much less damage than enemies do from these explosions. You can have up to 5 dendro cores existing on the field at once. If you were to create a 6th dendro core from another bloom reaction, the first dendro core you created would immediately explode and then it would be replaced by the new dendro core. The next reaction is hyperbloom. Hyperbloom is a second stage elemental reaction. Hyperbloom is created by hitting a dendro core created from the bloom reaction with electro, meaning that the bloom reaction with hydro and dendro has to take place first so that you can create a dendro core, and then you have to hit that core with electro and that will create hyperbloom. Triggering hyperbloom creates a dendro homing missile that seeks out and fires at the nearest enemy, dealing dendro damage. This dendro homing missile also has a very small AoE and can also deal damage to the player who created the hyper bloom reaction. But just like with the exploding dendro cores from bloom, if a player is in the AoE of a hyper bloom they created, they will take much less damage than monsters do. The next reaction is Burgeon. Burgeon is a second stage reaction that happens when the pyro element interacts with a dendro core. In this way, Burgeon is very similar to Hyperbloom, requiring you to have Hydro and Dendro to first create a Dendro core, and then hitting that Dendro core with Pyro, which will create a Dendro explosion. The Dendro damage Burgeon deals will be in an AoE of the same size as when a normal Dendro core would explode. And like Bloom and Hyperbloom, if a character is within the AoE radius of Burgeon when it goes off, they can receive damage from the Burgeon reaction they created. But again, they will receive much less damage than the enemies will. There are two final reactions to know about and they result from the Quicken status. Quicken occurs when you hit an enemy with Dendro or Electro, the order does not matter, and when you do, you apply the Quicken status to that enemy. The Quicken reaction itself deals no damage, but the status is important for two special Dendro reactions. The first of which is Spread. Spread occurs when you hit an enemy under the Quicken status, meaning that you've hit an enemy with Dendro and Electro, and then you hit them with Dendro again. Spread provides a 1.25 additive reaction multiplier to Dendro damage, allowing your Dendro damage to become even greater. So basically, you hit an enemy with Dendro, and then hit them with Electro, and then when you hit them with Dendro again, your Dendro damage becomes even stronger. The next and final reaction is Aggravate. Aggravate is very similar to Spread, but with Electro instead of Dendro. To cause the Aggravate reaction, you first need to hit an enemy with Dendro or Electro, and then you hit them again with Electro. In doing so, you will deal Electro damage and gain a 1.15 reaction multiplier. So you first hit an enemy with Dendro or Electro to create Quicken, and then when you hit them again, you will get that reaction multiplier allowing your Electro damage to become even stronger. And I know this is a lot to take in, so feel free to come back as much as you want to check these out again. There will be timestamps in the video, so you can rewatch anything you need to know about a specific reaction whenever you want. And while you're here, you can cause your own elemental reaction right now by placing your fin on that like button and watching the color come in. Now that we've covered the basics of what reactions can do, I want to give you more information about how they work so you can make the most out of them and deal the most damage. The first thing to know is that all the damage of a reaction will be based on the character that completes the reaction, not the one that starts it. So that means if you use Shangling to apply Pyro to an enemy and then hit that enemy with Kaya's skill, it will use Kaya's stats to apply Melt. 
However, if you use Kaya's skill to hit an enemy first, he will apply Cryo to that enemy. Then if you use Shangling to hit an enemy with Pyro right afterwards, she will be the one to trigger the reaction and will use her stats for the melt. And as I said before, this can lead to some really interesting situations, especially with multi-stage reactions like Hyperbloom. Because really, really good, really strong, high elemental application Hyperbloom teams not only cause Hyperbloom, but they can also cause Electrocharged, Quicken, Spread, and Aggravate. But it's not the goal of this video to go over the really deep intricacies of each of these elemental reactions and overloading your senses, or melting your mind, burgeoning your brain, or hyperblooming your hippocampus. I just want you to know that the reaction damage is based on the character that causes or completes the reaction, not the character that starts the reaction in the first place. The second important thing to know is that there are different types of reactions. There are amplifying reactions, transformative reactions, and additive reactions. And depending on what type of reaction you're using or you're creating, the stats that you want on your characters will be different. First up, these are the amplifying reactions. When a character triggers an amplifying reaction, that reaction damage will be increased by the character who triggers the reactions talent damage, attack, crit stats, and elemental mastery. These reactions can also crit and deal more damage in that way too. The next type of reactions are transformative reactions, and these are the transformative reactions in the game. When a character triggers a transformative reaction, the reaction damage will only be based on that character's elemental mastery and that character's level. Also, transformative reactions cannot crit. So, since the only way to increase the damage of transformative reactions is to increase a character's level and elemental mastery, it is a waste to build transformative reaction triggers like Kuki Shinobu or Sucrose with attack or crit instead of elemental mastery. Finally, there are additive reactions. Here are the additive reactions in the game. When a character triggers an additive reaction, the reaction damage will be increased by the character's level elemental mastery, their talent damage, attack, crit stats, and they will receive a flat damage bonus that increases the damage of the additive reaction. These reactions can also crit and deal more damage that way too. Now that we have a foundational knowledge about what elemental reactions do, I want to give you some tips and practical examples on how you can massively increase your damage through using elemental reactions. Tip number one. Focus on creating a team that constantly produces an elemental reaction. Start with one reaction in mind that you want your team to revolve around. Good examples of this could be Melt, Vaporize, Freeze, Aggravate, Hyperbloom, and so on. Tip number two, figure out who actually causes elemental reactions in your team. This can be kind of tricky and may require some testing, but make sure to look at who is actually causing the reactions, as sometimes it may not happen exactly as you imagine. Tip number three, build characters based on which reactions they will trigger. Elemental mastery is great on any character that is going to trigger a reaction, but it is completely useless for characters that are not triggering reactions. Similarly, if a character is triggering a transformative reaction, like Hyperbloom or Swirl, they want a lot of elemental mastery, but they don't really care about crit so much. Whereas if a character is triggering an amplifying or additive reaction, like Melt, Vaporize, Aggravate, or Spread, they want EM, but they also want a lot of attack and crit. Tip number four, seek to maximize the damage of Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, or Electro reactions by using the Animo element. Using Animo with Pyro, Hydro, Electro, or Cryo and the Viridescent Venera set can shred those elemental resistances and increase Swirl damage dramatically, which will massively increase your damage. Using the Viridescent Artifact set, what ends up happening is you increase the damage of an element, an elemental reaction, and elemental sub-reactions. Meaning you can use Animo to increase the damage of Pyro, and then also increase the damage of Vaporize, and then also increase the damage of Swirls. So using Animo in a team can really boost the team's damage, though it can be a little hard to pull off in Dendro teams. Tip number five is experiment. 
Even though characters may be the same elements, they could have very different timings and non-standard rules, and the way things line up can be very different as well. Experiment to see what works best with you, or stop by stream and feel free to ask me questions. I also want to give you some practical examples of really using reactions well in some notoriously strong teams. One thing that you'll notice about these teams is that they are often really good at not just making one, but multiple reactions consistently. The first team is Classic Taser. This is a 4 star only team that uses Fischl, Beidou, Xingqiu, and Sucrose and it seeks to optimize the electro charge and swirl reactions. The idea behind this team is that you're using Xingqiu and Fischl to first produce the electro charge reaction and then you use Sucrose to swirl that reaction and then bring in Beidou for a little bit more electro damage. What ends up happening is you get a lot of swirls of both Hydro and Electro because Electro Charge has both the Hydro and Electro Aura underneath, so Sucrose can end up swirling both elements which ramps up the damage of both. And because of various passives and reaction bonuses, that not only increases the damage of all of the elements in play, but it also increases the damage of the reactions as well. So you're not only doing more damage with Electro Charge, but you're also doing more damage with Hydro, Electro, Swirl, and even more damage with Electro Charge again. If you want a detailed breakdown of how to use this team, I do have a video that goes through the exact rotations and how to build the characters, and I'll have that linked in the description below. The next great example of an elemental reaction team done right is the classic Raiden National Team. This team has been dubbed an overvape team because it does overload and vaporize very consistently. You play this team by starting off with Raiden's skill, then Bennett's skill and burst, Xingqiu's skill and burst, and Xiongling's skill and burst, and finally finishing off with Raiden's elemental burst. What ends up happening is you have a lot of off-field pyro, hydro, and on-field electro going off all at the same time. And because Xiongling and Xingqiu have special characteristics about themselves that make them really nice for elemental reaction teams, and Bennett gives you a ton of attack from his burst and a lot of healing on top of that, this team is super easy to play and really, really powerful. And because of the special application properties of Xingqiu and the zero ICD or internal cooldown on Xiongling's elemental burst, you end up creating a lot of reactions. This team ends up creating Vaporize, Overload, and Electro Charge really easily and it's a very easy team to play. The next team that I want to talk about is a Dendro team that might look almost identical to a team that we just talked about. This team uses Nahida, Fischl, Xingqiu, and Beidou. And it is almost exactly the same as the Taser team we talked about before, but instead of using Sucrose, we're using Nahida as an on-field Dendro driver. This means that it's going to be Nahida's job to be on-field using a lot of her normal attacks and her skill when it's available, while Fischl, Xingqiu, and Beidou do all of their damage off-field. Using this team, we get something pretty special. Nahida's Dendro damage, along with Fischl or Beidou's Electro damage, can create the Quicken reaction. And while this reaction doesn't do any damage on its own, it does make subsequent Dendro or Electro deal more damage through the spread and aggravate reactions respectively. And adding Xingqiu to the mix also adds Hydro application, which can make Bloom and Electro charge reactions. But there's even more, because Bloom produces Dendro cores and Fischl's Ascension 4 passive can hit the Dendro cores and create Hyper Bloom. So this one team has incredible synergy because it can create Spread, Aggravate, Bloom, Electro Charge, and sometimes Hyper Bloom. Now it should be noted that characters like Fischl and Beidou are not very good in Hyper Bloom teams because their elemental skills or bursts do not target the Dendro cores. So creating Hyper Blooms with Fischl and Beidou is inconsistent at best. And even though you would be better off using a character like Kuki Shinobu for a Hyper Bloom team, this type of team just illustrates that you can create characters that have tons of synergy with each other to create tons and tons of elemental reactions of all different types and deal tremendous amounts of damage. And if you're wondering which characters are the best for elemental reactions and are just broken in general, I'll have a link to a video that explains exactly that in the description below. But if you don't have those characters and want to know how to build the characters you do have, I have a video that quickly explains how to build every character in the game. 
This video is quite long, but it has timestamps that will let you go exactly to the characters you want to figure out how to build and make them the very best they can be. And that video will also be in the description. Genshin Impact's elemental reaction system is seemingly simple on the surface, but incredibly deep and sometimes a bit overwhelming in practice. But mastering elemental reactions will massively increase your damage, help you build better teams, and just make you feel like a legend. So feel free to come back to this video if you're ever curious about elemental reactions or just ask me about them live on stream. I love you all, stay awesome, may order guide you friends, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.